Hello, this is Jason Clement, Technical Sales Manager at Isonus, and welcome to this Peer Access Advanced Training Module. This module is User Import and Peer Access. Our prerequisites are an understanding of peer access, an understanding of CSV files in Microsoft Excel or a similar program. Our objectives are understand how to use a CSV file to import users and their badge into peer access. Let's go ahead and jump right into the software. First we're going to take a look at the Excel spreadsheet. If you're on YouTube, this spreadsheet will be downloaded by a link in the description below. If you're on our online learning portal, you can download it from the widget below this video as well. In this spreadsheet, there's two sheets. The first sheet is instructions. It tells you how to use this document and what each field means, the description, and any notes that go along with it. The second sheet is the actual user import portion. So let's go ahead and review this sheet. Step number one, we want to read through the sheet to understand the different fields for the next sheet, or our user import sheet. Print out this sheet with the instructions, that way you'll have a reference note handy. Under the user import sheet, delete the instructional data and enter in a new data for your site. Double check the data for integrity. If we go to our user import sheet, I have some users that I have put in here just to show what the data will look like. Going back to our instruction sheet, once you have all your data entered in, you're going to delete this sheet. This is very important. If you do not delete this sheet, you will have nothing to import and it will fail. Then we're going to go to the file and save it as a CSV. Then we'll have to save that file as a compressed file. And finally, we'll import it into Peer Access. Reviewing these fields, last name is pretty self-explanatory. It's the last name, first name, and middle name. Area name, if you're not using areas, if you're saying, what is an area? I don't understand what that is. You're not using areas, and it will be common. Do not change this area if you are not using areas. What's the credential type? Is it a badge or a pin? You can only import one credential. So if you have badge and pin, you will only be able to import one or the other. The second credential, you'll have to enter in manually. If you're entering in a PIN, will it have a count limit on it? Enter in one here if it has a count limit, otherwise leave it blank. If you enter in a count limit, then you have to say how many uses are left on that count limit. I.e., I can only read this card or use this PIN 10 times before it will start rejecting. And finally, if you want to put an expiration date on a credential, you can put that in here as well. And it must follow the specific format of year, month, day, year being four characters, month being two, day being two as well. So if I wanted it for July 1st, I would have to put in a month of 07 and a day of 01. So let's go ahead and review this user import sheet. Our first user is Steve Iserman. Last name, first name, middle name, again, self-explanatory. Area name, if you don't know what areas are, most likely you're gonna put those in the common area. Badge ID is your card number. In order to put this card number in, you must be using bit masking. If you're not sure what bit masking is, please check our YouTube channel or online learning portal where we have a video explaining that. Our credential type is one, and we've put an expiration date on this card. Frodo Baggins is fairly simple. We're just importing his user, his badge ID, and it's a standard credential. Luke Skywalker, we're importing him with a credential type of two, meaning that it's going to be a pin entry. We're going to turn on account limit, and he can only use that pin 10 times. Gandalf the Grey, he's fairly simple as well. We're just importing his user and his badge. So if we go back to our instructions, we have our data inserted. The next thing to do is to delete this sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete this sheet. Before I actually delete it, step five, we're gonna save it as a CSV. Step six, we're going to actually save it as a zip folder. So let's go ahead and delete this sheet. Yes, I want to delete this. Now I'm going to go up to File, and I'm going to Save As. By default, Excel is going to save it as an Excel workbook. We want to save this as a CSV file. 
the comma delimited type. You can see there's a CSV Mac and a CSV MS DOS. You want CSV comma delimited. So if you're using something other than Excel, just make sure that it's a comma delimited CSV file. Once we've chosen that, we're going to choose save. Yes, we want to keep the format. We understand we're going to lose some things by changing from a spreadsheet to an actual CSV file. From there, I actually want to close this out, and Excel is going to try to push this on me again. Yes, I'm fine with saving it as a CSV file. Yes, replace it. Yes, use the format. Now we can see I've got my spreadsheet file, and I've got my CSV file. I want to right-click on this file, send to, and send it to a compressed zip folder. This step is very important. You cannot just import the direct CSV file. It must be in a compressed zipped folder. We can change the name if we want to. I'm just going to leave it the same. From here, we'll go into our peer access tenant. So I've created a blank tenant basically on our user tab and under users. On the right hand side, we have this import user button. We're going to left click this button and then we're going to go to the folder where we save that file which is under my C drive, this import training folder, and finally our user import public zip file. And you can see that our users and credentials have been successfully imported. So let's go ahead and take a look at our two users that had some special conditions. Steve Iserman had an expiration date on his credential. So I'm going to go ahead and left click his credential and edit it. And we can see that it pulled in the time limit. The time is basically the GMT time. For example, I'm in Eastern time, I'm GMT minus five. So essentially I'd add five hours into my import time. If we go back to our users and we look at Luke Skywalker, we can see that we imported a pin credential, which is denoted by this little matrix here. If I go in and edit this, I can see that the count limit has been turned on and the remaining usage has been set to 10. Thank you for watching this video. We hope it was beneficial. Have a fantastic day.